Hello friends, this is Nazmi Can. In this video, I'm going to show you a game played between the two legendary grandmasters and former world champions, Mir Kasparov and Viswanathan Anand. And this game was played in New York City in 1995. This is the tenth game of the world championship match. And after starting the, the games uh, with D4, Kasparov gets no opening advantage, and from the sixth game and on, he decides to play e4 move e5 knight f3 knight c6 and in the eighth game he went for scotch but scotch opening doesn't lead any advantage for white so he deviates to Ruy Lopez opening bishop b5 and nowadays Vishwanathan Anand uh, after 20 years later he generally prefers the move knight f6 which characterizes the Berlin Wall after castles Knight takes e4, d4, knight d6, takes on c6, dc, d5, knight f5, queen d8, and king d8. This is just the beginning of the uh, heavily theoretical line uh, Berlin Wall. But in this game, we will see another line which is also topical. We should pay 4, knight f6, and castles. Still more popular move, bishop e7. Is the main continuation here, but also a very topical line. Knight e4 was played by Anand and specially prepared for this match. d4. It's also possible to play rook e1 and try to grab this pawn, but uh, this gives like uh, this gives White no advantage after all. d4, b5, bishop b3, d5, placing an important pawn to the center. Uh, and supporting knight on e4, d takes e5, attacking the d5 pawn, bishop e6. And now there are two main continuations c3, bishop e3, and the most common move knight bd2. And of course, as in the sixth game, Kasparov went on to play knight bd2, knight c5, c3, and d4. And now Kasparov uncorks a very uh, interesting move, knight g5. A very interesting blow for that time, but it's now a uh, normal theory. Uh, and the other move is to take on bishop e6. This is another topical line. And after knight g5, black doesn't have to accept this peace sacrifice, this remarkable peace sacrifice. But uh, after accepting that, the theory is very well established here uh, by attacking the Knight on c6, uh, white develops his queen, queen f3. It's hard to defend the knight, so uh, black has to settle with its king, long castle. Bishop takes e6, f takes e6, and queen takes e6. As it seems that uh, white's queen si black's queen side structure is too weak, and also his king, but with some tactical tricks, black uh, nowadays is known to be equalized here. Queen takes e5, b4 attacking the knight and also the protector of the whole um, king pawn formation. Queen d5, only move here. Queen takes d5, e takes d5, um, bc5, and by sacrificing a piece, black gets two connected pass pawns. b takes c3, knight b3, and d4. Now you can check your database uh, for this position and you, you might find lots of games, hundreds of games. And uh, Grandmaster practice shows us that is that this position is uh, playable for Brack uh, and it's about equal. But after knight g5, Vishwanathan Anand goes for the move d takes c3 as he prefers in sixth game of the match too. And knight takes e6, f takes e6 bc3. It's almost the same moves as in the sixth game, queen d3. And now Kasparov uncorks a very strong blow here. Uh, even it's very strong today. Bishop c2. Uh, the idea uh, belongs to Mihail Tal, former world champion, is connected with a rook sacrifice. We will see. Queen takes c3. And after knight b3, uh, white's offering a whole rook for his opponent. Of course, uh, it's not obligatory to accept the sacrifice. Uh, black can play other moves like rook d8, 
but it's also not very good for black. Uh, there's there are two um, games. One is a high level game by Nailich Mamedyarov. Went like this: Bishop d2, attacking the queen and protecting his own queen. Queen takes e5, rook e1. As you see, black's king is in the center and white um, join white force joined the game uh, with ease by attacking um, black's queen. Queen d5, queen g4. Again, threatening to take on e6 and not allowing black bishop to develop here because of the threat on g7. Uh, black has to react. Knight d4, knight takes c5, bishop takes c5, and Mawajaro played, uh, sorry, Nidich played here the move queen g7, and after rook f8, Mawajaro holds the game uh, to a draw. But in a correspondence game, the stronger continuation was found and played, and bishop e4, very strong move. Um, the idea is that after queen g7, rook f8, and now if bishop e4, then there is queen h5, and this h5 square is very important for the queen, very active square for the queen. But as we'll see after bishop e4, now disrupting the queen to a passive square, queen d6, and queen takes g7, now white is a winning position because of the weakened black king, and Bishop pair and very active forces. It's easy to win even uh, in a correspondence game. But after knight d3, Anand takes on b3, and white captures on b3 with his bishop. And it's still possible to take on um, a1. And there is a very important game. Um, after this move, and I think it's very enjoyable to watch because not a high level game, but uh, still very instructive. White goes very forcefully he here to play queen h5, forcing black structure to uh, somewhat weaken himself. And after g6, the point is revealed, not only threatening the c6 knight, but also trying to penetrate f6 square. And Black plays knight d8, offering his rook back uh, in order to uh, have some breathe uh, by taking the e5 pawn. Let's say after queen takes queen takes e5, black can develop his bishop and castle hopes uh, of survival. But after knight d8, white doesn't let the opponent go. Queen f6, a very strong move, again at attacking the uh, h8. Rook and also trying to attack the e6 pawn. Rook g8 was played, and after the bishop takes e6, we see that um, even rook up, black forces are helpless against white's two active forces, and bishop will uh, about to develop on a3. And in the game, rook g7 was played, and after bishop a3, double attack. Threatening mating one here and um, threatening to take the queen. And uh, if queen takes f1, king takes f1 is no help because you cannot take the a3 bishop because of the hanging piece on g7. A long line, so Anand prefers to play knight d4 move. And Kasparov is still in preparation and plays queen g4 calmly and immediately. Queen g4, offering the rook again, and this time Anand sees no point not by not accepting the gift, so he takes the rook by queen takes a1, and bishop takes e6, threatens bishop d7. It's very hard to accept the challenge because uh, easily white wins after bishop g5, threatening mate and the queen on a1, so it's over. So Anand went for rook d8. Another move can be seen by queen c3. And this shows us the strength of the move bishop d7, king f7, bishop e3, a very important move because the knight has no retreat square. As you see, the, all the squares are covered. And this, this, this knight is also master of the e6 square. Uh, else black uh, gets made after queen e6. So he has to react exactly. Bishop c5. 
and e6. Check. Only move. King g8 and one and last uh, critical move is queen e4. Very strong move. Attacking the rook and trying to play e7. Finishing the game off. Because the king is uh, unluckily situated there. Uh, which is about to be made it on d5. And the uh, white pawn is about to queen. So bishop d7 move should be prevented. Rook d8. And again, even after five moves, uh, after novelty, Kasparov still plays his moves with utmost speed, and he plays the move bishop h5. Another remarkable move. Uh, he's trying to attack the queen, and if, if let's say, sorry, take on f1 and accept the gift, then there is mate in two, queen h5, king e7, and queen f7. So. Black has to react accordingly. He has to uh, return his queen back to defense, and Anand tries to do that by playing queen c3. His idea is to um, return his queen to defense, and this leaves us with bishop g7, queen d3. At last, he wants to return the queen to g6 square and exchange the queens off. Bishop h8 and queen g6, and after. Um, many adventures in the opening. It seems that White is a pawn up, and even after exchange of queens, his advantage uh, will continue. Bishop f6 attacking the rook. Bishop e7. Bishop takes, and after exchange of the queens, King e7. There arises the last and uh, one of the most crucial points of the game. And Kasparov, as in his notes, said that. In this position, he doesn't want to blow his uh, very nice opening uh, preparation and went on the deep thing here. Even uh, white is a pawn up, but black has some chances for counterplay with c5, c4. His queen side pawn majority uh, is issue here. So Kasparov's move is to prevent this by playing rook c1. And after rook c1, black's counterplay stopped, and now white will go forward with his uh, kingside pawn majority, c6. And after f4, we will remember the two rules in the endgame. Grandmaster Bellavant said that uh, endgames have two rules. First rule is do not rush, don't hurry, and secondly, and most importantly, centralize your king, as in this case. So after c6, f4, and a5, white's idea is clear. He has to centralize his king, not rushing with his pawn majority to advance. King f2, a4, king e3, and b4. And suddenly it seems that black has some counterplay on the queen side uh, by pushing his pawns. But for the last time, Kasparov concentrates on this counterplay and prevent this by bishop d1 and uh, the game is practically over but it's still possible to get the get the game um, going bad let's say like playing rook c4 double attack it seems a strong move but you may stop your video and try to figure out how black can get some counterplay after this move uh, a remarkable move here helps uh, black to survive that is a3 move, uh, and it seems that you cannot take any of these pieces. If rook takes d4, rook takes d4, king takes d4, with huge material advantage, white loses the game by b3 because of the a pawn, it's queening. And rook takes b4, it's also losing easily by knight c2, forking the rook and the king. After b4, very strong and um, game finisher move, bishop d1, a3, and after this, uh, black's queenside pawn formation is um, stuck there, so white's game is about to start on the king side, g4. Simple and strong, wants to advance f5. So Anand tries to prevent this by attacking this pawn, but 
it's still very strong to play rook c4, as I previously mentioned. And after protecting the knight with c5, king e4, more centralization, attacking the rook on d5, and after rook d8, rook takes c5, one more pawn, now the game is gone. Knight e6, rook d5, trying to exchange more pieces in order to win easily. Anand wants to avoid that, but the game is already over after some more moves. I think not important for us. And after rook d6, white threatens to play bishop uh, invasion on h5 and f6, and it's already uh, um, over. And Vishwanath and Anand resigned here, and Kasparov went on to win his first game of the match. And after that, uh, after this victory, he went on to win the whole match by um, ten and a half, seven and a half, and this is so a very crucial game for Gary to preserve his title. Okay, very complicated game. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.